Welcome to the Savvy Sightseer, the channel that helps you travel savvy. Okay, so I want to go ahead and dive in here to the Disneyland app and the Genie Plus part of it specifically. Last year, Disneyland rolled out the Genie Plus app. They also rolled it out at Disney World, but today we're going to focus on the one that's just at Disneyland. This service is one that came back after the pandemic and replaced the MaxPass system. So if you were familiar with the MaxPass system, Genie Plus is similar to me in a lot of ways, but slightly different and can be a little confusing for those people that have never used it before. It also costs extra money, which can be a deterrent. So for some people, they don't see maybe the reason of getting it or spending that extra money when you've already spent a lot of money on tickets. My hope today is to explain to you why the Genie, Genie Plus app is actually really beneficial and can actually save you money in the long run if used correctly. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Disneyland app. I go into a lot more greater detail on my site, thesavvysiteseer.com. So if you need to know more about the Disneyland app itself, I highly suggest you go check that out. But on the app is where you're going to find Genie Plus. There's two things you'll see there that might confuse you. And that first thing is that you're going to see something called Disney Genie Service and the Genie Plus. These are different. Genie Plus costs money and provides you with a very specific service. Whereas Disney, Disney Genie Service is free. And to be honest, I don't really consider it worth my time to kind of play around with. I found it to be a bit clunky and not really accomplish what I think Disney's intention was or hopes were for that app. I've heard the same thing from other people too. So in my opinion, you know, go for it. If you don't want to pay the extra money, check out that part of the app. Um, but in my case, I, I just don't use it when I'm in the parks. Probably one of the most important things you need to know about G Genie Plus is that you have to pay for it and the price can vary based on how busy the day is. The highest I have seen it is $30 per day per person. So for a family of four like us, that means an additional $120 per day. It's a lot. We buy our tickets through Getaway Today, and when we do that, we always make sure we get the option with Genie Plus already attached to our tickets. This can actually save a lot of money in the long run if you know for sure you're going to get Genie Plus. If you don't have it on your ticket already, you will actually buy it as soon as you scan your ticket into the park at the gates. This is the only way to do it. Do not wait until later in the day for three reasons. First, you won't get the best bang for your buck simply because you will have lost time you could have been using it. Secondly, on those busier days, they will stop selling it so you could miss out. For example, a few days ago during the Christmas season, um, they actually sold out of Genie Plus at noon. And third, the last reason, busier attractions will run out of Lightning Lane passes. We actually encountered that in our trip just a few weeks ago. So if you decide to buy it, you will buy it through the app. And you can see in the picture that there's that button right on the first screen of the app to purchase this service. It'll tell you the price for that day. Now the whole reason for buying Genie Plus is to get Lightning Lane passes. These are basically a time slot you get to return to a ride. You can scan your pass in the Lightning Lane of the ride and then get to bypass the whole standby line. This can save you a considerable amount of time, and I'm a firm believer that if it's saving you time, it's saving you money. So for some rides, it could save us, or it did save us, up to 30 to 45 minutes of waiting in line and allowing us to accomplish many more rides than we would have if we would have ridden all the rides using the standby line. This here is the biggest reason to get Genie Plus. It saves you time, and you just get to ride more rides. Every time I return home from a trip or tell people, you know, here's all the rides I rode in one day, they're always shocked at how much we can accomplish. If you travel savvy and you know this app and you know how to operate Genie Plus, you're going to do the same thing. And if you're going to Disneyland, odds are you're there to ride a bunch of rides. So why not optimize your time there and ride as many as possible? One other thing that I feel is really important for people to know before they purchase the Genie Plus app so that they're not disappointed is that not every ride in both parks are included. So here's a list of the different um, rides that are available through Genie Plus and offer a lightning lane in both parks. So you can see that there's different rides for the different parks. Um, now, this could then deter some of you from purchasing Genie Plus if the rides that you really, really want to ride aren't offered there, then it's probably not worth purchasing. But if these are some of the rides that you know you're going to want to ride and ride multiple times, then Genie Plus is definitely worth it. 
The last thing that I want you to know about Genie Plus and purchasing it is that the two most popular rides in the parks, Radiator Springs Racers and Rise of the Resistance, have what they call an individual lightning lane option, which means you pay an additional amount of money on top of your ticket and Genie Plus cost. These lightning lane, individual lightning lane options can run as high as $25 extra per person for each ride. When we were there, um, Radiator Springs Racer was $20 extra per person and Rise of the Resistance was running $25 extra per person. Um, so they're not included in the basic Genie Plus. This is where I draw my line at purchasing these extra things at Disneyland. Um, specifically, it just seems like an insane amount to pay for one ride for a few minutes. I, I just couldn't justify spending $100 for you know 15 minutes on Rise of the Resistance. These two rides are rides that I'll just go ahead and wait in line for and try to hit them when their lines aren't outrageous. I just can't justify that additional cost. And with the time that I'm really saving using Genie Plus on all those other rides, it allots that time that I can use then to wait in those two lines to make sure I get on them. Um, they're two of my favorites, so I always want to make sure I ride them. I'm just not going to pay that additional amount to do it. So now that we've gone over kind of all those things you need to know about purchasing Genie Plus and whether you should purchase it or not, let's talk about how we actually get to that part of the app. So um, when you get onto your Disneyland app, you're going to see down in that bottom right hand corner, three lines. And when you click on those three lines down there, this new screen is going to pop up and it's going to give you all these options. To the right, you're going to see where it says My Genie Day. Once you click on that, that's going to take you to a new screen, which I'll show you in just a minute. And when I talk about how you actually go about booking those lightning lanes and how that all works. So just know that that's how you get there. Now, the app itself is a little clunky, I will say. And one of the best tips I can give you, um, and I talk a lot about this on the app post I have on my website, the SavvySightseer.com, is that play around with the app before you go to Disneyland. If you've never use the app before you've never been to Disneyland, then playing around on that app is so beneficial because you'll get used to where things are, how to use them, how to use the map, all that kind of good stuff. So write that down as a great tip to play around with the app before you go. Once you have purchased Genie Plus, the first thing you must do is make sure that one person in your whole party has everyone's tickets on their Disneyland app. I talk a lot more about this on my website, thesavvysightseer.com. So be sure to check that out, that Disneyland app post, because it gives you all the information of how you go about that. Now, the reason for making sure that everybody's tickets is on one person's app is because that person is going to be designated the Genie Plus Master. That's what I like to call him or her. Basically, they're going to be in charge of booking the lightning lanes for each person in your party all at once. If you try to book them separately, odds are you're going to get different time slots. And so you want to make sure that you're all together. Even if one person books them and everyone else still has their ticket on their app, their lightning lane pass will still show up in their phone or on their app. I'm always the one who looks, who books them. And so for some rides I don't go on and I'll end up waiting with my daughter. So my husband's still able to access the pass on his app and scan it at the ride, even though I was the one who booked it. So now comes the fun part, choosing which ride to ride first. I honestly get a thrill out of using Genie Plus. There is some real strategy to this, and I've done a ton of research, and some people say to wait to use your first lightning lane until you've been in the park for an hour or two, because this is when you can actually ride most rides standby because the lines aren't super long. Now, other people will tell you to choose your first attraction the second you walk in the gate and scan your ticket for certain rides like Space Mountain. So that's another thing you need to know that you can't start choosing your lightning lane rides until your ticket has been scanned at the gate for that day. So for me, the last time we were there, I kind of used both strategies. It really depended on what times were showing available for each ride. So for instance, if Space Mountain has a standby wait time of only 10 minutes, I'm not going to waste my lightning lane pass on that ride. I'm just going to walk on. But if it has a wait time of 75 minutes, then I would go ahead and use it. So when you go to the Genie Plus part of the app, you will be given a list of the rides. You can kind of see that on the picture on the screen. There's the standby wait times and then their next lightning lane available time. And you can see what it looks like there. If you book the lightning lane, it's usually for some time in the future. So you want to be strategic about where you're located in the park, what rides you can ride in the meantime, and if you can make it to that ride in time. If you don't make it in time, you will lose that lightning lane. So that's important to remember. So when you choose a time, you're given an hour window. If you look at the picture on the screen, you can see Autotopia has a lightning lane for 3.35 p.m., 
once you book that, you will get a confirmation of your window, um, your time window. So for this one, the window to scan your lightning lane at the ride would be from 3.35 to 4.35 p.m. And again, if you don't scan it within that time period, use that lightning lane uh, pass up. You're only given one lightning lane per ride per day. So again, that's why it's so important that if there's a standby wait time of 10 minutes and you know you're going to want to ride that ride more than once, don't waste it. Um, ride the ride standby and then later on in the day book that lightning lane for that ride so you can ride it a second time we did that with space mountain so that my son could ride it twice because it's one of his favorite rides once you book a lightning lane you need to realize you can't book another one until one of two things happens the first of those things is that you scan your lightning lane at the ride. As soon as you scan, you can book a new lightning lane. This is when I would be standing in line for that ride and start looking for our next lightning lane to book. The second thing that could happen that allows you to book a new lightning lane is let's say you book a lightning lane for Space Mountain and it's not for three hours later. You don't have to wait those entire three hours. You can book another one after two hours have passed since you booked that lightning lane. So you will definitely want to set a timer on your phone to let you know when those two hours are up. So then you can do something called stacking your lightning lanes. That way you're optimizing your use of Genie Plus, making sure you're getting in as many rides as possible. Another tip is to make sure that you're being conscientious of booking the more popular rides earlier in the day. One of the rides we saw run out of lightning lane passes was Guardians of the Galaxy. We had grabbed one earlier in the day around noon and our time to return wasn't until 7.45 that night. By two o'clock the day, there were no lightning lane passes available for anybody. So luckily we had paid attention to that. We had booked ours. I booked, um, like I said, at noon and at two o'clock, I was able to book another lightning lane for web slingers, which worked out perfect. And so we were able to go about riding our other rides and stacking those um, until guardians came up at 7.45. Lastly, this is a big thing and I mentioned it earlier. Once you book and use a lightning lane, you can't book this ride again. So if you wanna ride a ride more than once, think about trying to ride certain rides with short lines standby and save it for when the ride has a longer wait time later in the day. We did this with Soren. We jumped on the first thing in the morning using the standby line, then booked a lightning lane later in the day for a return time around 8.30 p.m. And this allowed us to basically walk right onto the ride twice that day. So if you're still not sure whether you want Genie Plus or not, there's one last thing I want to tell you about. And for me, it's the thing that makes the uh, Genie Plus completely worth it. And that is the fact that with Genie Plus, you also get photo pass photos. And so what that means is that on all those rides like Space Mountain, um, Incredicoaster, um, Splash Mountain, those rides all have photos that are taken of you. And when you get off, you go and you scan that. You take a picture of the code and you can either purchase a photo pass for that day, which is $19.99, or at least that's what I heard it was last. So for $19.99, you can purchase that photo pass and get those photos. But if you already buy Genie Plus, which like I said, is like $25, maybe 30 at the most, you not only get the ability to use lightning lanes, but you also get that photo pass with it. So you get unlimited photo downloads. So for me, I really take advantage of that, making sure I download all those pictures from the rides, but also um, using those photographers around the parks to take really cool pictures um, with really unique perspectives that only they can get because they're occupying that space to take pictures. So for me, that makes Genie Plus a no brainer. Overall, I definitely feel like the benefits outweigh the cons of Genie Plus and it's something that we'll be using each time we go. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have about Genie Plus or Disneyland and I'll be happy to help you. And you can do that through the website, thesavvysightseer.com. Also check out other destinations that I have featured on that website, also along with all those tips to help you travel savvy.